that's true. The fruit of doctrine is sometimes the best evidence of whether it's true. It is very good to read biographies to see the outworking of certain positions. For example, the strength of divine sovereignty teachings among the Calvinists is the type of men that have bred. Divine sovereignty should be believed in whether you're Arminian or Calvinistic. You may prefer, as I do, to avoid both titles, so you're not committed to the perversions that may be implicit in extreme forms. But uh, the doctrine of divine sovereignty, which taught in effect that there's no such thing as chance, something I believe implicitly myself. I think chance and coincidence are only names that, that ignorance gives to the work of God. But if you read Christian biography, you'll find that the most influential people in the Christian world have been strong believers in divine sovereignty. Uh, this sort of thing from the Bible. Joseph's brethren are confessing their sins and Joseph said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. God did send me before you. Here Joseph gets by second, secondary instruments and looks at the primary and says, God was in it all. Uh, Shimei, I think it is, curses David and one of David's men says, I'll go and lift his head off, many with a sword. And David says, no, God has bidden him, curse David. David refused to look at second causes. You know, if you beat a dog with a stick, he doesn't bite you. Uh, yeah, if you beat a dog with a stick, he doesn't bite you, he bites the stick. You and I are inclined to do the same with the events of life. The Christian view, I believe, is the view of divine sovereignty. That God is in control, God overrules all. He doesn't take away human freedom. We're not fatalists or determinists. He doesn't take away human freedom. But God is in control. Nothing can happen but by divine permission. Nothing. Pilate says to Jesus, don't you know I've got power to crucify you? Or to release you? And then what does Christ say? You can have no power at all unless we're given thee from above. If you and I could write that on all the events of life, it would take away a lot of the pain. You could have no power at all except we're given thee from above. Whatever it is, you could have no power at all except we're given thee from above. That I believe is a Christian position. This is the position of God's sovereignty. As you really read Christian biography, you find a man like Adoniram Judson who went through hell. Went through hell. You read about his time incarcerated in a horrible prison month after month after month. You read of the deaths of his first two wives. He said, I couldn't have gone through it unless I believed that God was in every event. God was in every event. You know, he was an atheist. He'd been led into an atheism by a friend at college. When he was running away from his family and running away from God one night he stayed at a hotel. I was told there was only one room available and next door was a man dying. He said, I don't care about that. He took the room, listened to the moaning and the groaning all night long. Made him think a little more seriously about his giving up a Christianity. And in the morning he finds out the man who's died is the man that led him into atheism. Mm. Now Judson believed the hand of God was in that. That wasn't a fluke. The hand of God was in that. See. And you'll find that the people God has used most have been strong believers in divine sovereignty. I'm not talking about Calvinistic predestination. I'm talking about the type of God that Wesley believed in. Just as surely, but nothing happens by chance. There is no coincidence. People are free, but God's the great chess player. He always has the last word, always overrules. You can test doctrines by the way they work out. See? So that's a short rule of thumb of one man's approach. That is purely mine um, and uh, has all the defects of being so limited. You may want to now talk about it, raise some questions or something. That's just, that's just an introduction to the topic.